Genomics England has always put the views of the public and patients at the centre of everything it does. Now, I know a lot of people say things like that, but for us, it's absolutely critical. Public dialogue has always been such an important part of our work because we're involved in the development of whole new services. Without you, we can't really decide by ourselves or indeed with the NHS what patients think and how they think the services ought to work for them. It's possible to use whole genome sequencing to screen babies soon after birth to find out whether they've got any conditions which might affect them during their childhood and which could be improved, made better, or even prevented because of that knowledge. But it's not straightforward. There are two contexts for this discussion. There's the role of whole genome sequencing in addition to or to replace the current newborn screening program looking for abnormalities that will affect newborn babies. But secondly, we need to explore other purposes of whole genome sequencing in newborns. Uh, for example, identifying genetic abnormalities that may affect the individual uh, in later life. I, all I knew about was the HELPRIC test. I didn't know anything about whole genome testing or screening, but I was heavily pregnant at the time, so I felt it was something I could relate to. It was all relatively brand new to me. I wasn't aware that it was something that um, was so in the forefront of kind of medical minds. I didn't even know science was this far advanced. There was no preaching, there was no teaching, like you must understand this, this is why it's good, this is right. It's all been very much open table discussion and really honest. I think it also helps most for everyone pretty much sort of being at home. That's another thing to put us all on an even keel when you do it by a video. I think people slowly have opened up a lot more. It's good that we don't all have the same opinions because no, no one's right, no one's wrong in these chats. There's such a, a wide variety of people. I, I think I went in thinking, oh, this is a great idea, go and do it. And then people started bringing stuff up where I thought, actually, if I don't speak up and ask questions and try and get a bit more of an understanding and vice versa, then maybe something might be missed that could end up being really crucial in the future. So if we could move to our small groups to continue our discussion. So these little boxes with heads in, but it's, it's great because in the breakout rooms, you're encouraged to speak openly and freely. So I'm giving what I can give uh, and my very best. Uh, I give, uh, I'm afraid I'm brutally honest, I will say what I believe. Your opinion is recognised, your head. You know what, that was one of the things I like. You know, you're making a contribution and you're speaking and they're listening. I was a little bit um, dubious about the fact that we were going to have homework tasks, but actually quite a big proportion of it was reviewing little films or, um, you know, sort of excerpts. Part of the homework is quite often um, here are the questions that were asked that we didn't get around to and they've now got answers to them. Everything that we covered was available on those platforms as well. You know, we do the heel prep test for newborns. Well, the whole genome sequencing will just take that one step further. Um, so it'll go into your genetics to see if there's any um, conditions that you're more susceptible to. You find out when, you five, when your daughter's born that there's a chance she could have breast cancer and die from it. The implications on things like that when it's not going to affect you for that long and is it your right to know? Because it's not necessarily, it's not going to affect you first person. It will affect your daughter. So should you have that information or is that her information to have? There have been different opinions. Some people have said if that information was available, they wouldn't want to know. It's 50-50. Some people believe that you shouldn't share it because of stigma. And some people believe that you should share it for information to get people informed and people around you will know. It's a huge ethical dilemma really most of this is <laughs> um, it's ethical things that are, are the, the issue not the science so I learned a lot and the experts were so good they were explaining so that for a newcomer like me who didn't have any idea about these things I could understand very nicely and then I could be able to raise my questions my name is Ben our son Ben Ben's diagnosed shortly after his fourth birthday 
um, which is about the average age for diagnosis. The testimonies make it very much, this is real, these are real people. I just found that mind-blowing because you're getting a personal touch to it. Even though the baby is the one being sequenced, it will provide information about the parents. It can provide information about the siblings. I'm a sickle cell carrier, so is my mum. It then made us have conversations um, where we started to realise that actually, even as carriers, it's good that it's been highlighted now because there could be so much more that's done. It's that, that For me personally, that's been a very kind of interesting side of it because of how personal it is. It, it has really developed to, to a great group discussion. I remember ending one of the sessions as a group thinking that was fantastic. We know that there's going to be a report that's going to be done. And I think knowing that we've been a part of a system that could eventually benefit us in the future. Like I can imagine maybe having kids in the future and this would be something that then would be normal. Like anything that you're going to be doing you now, there is a lot of concerns that come along with it, but you know, this can benefit the whole population, starting with newborns and could get rolled out into other age groups or vulnerable people. The more we can be more open-minded, the more research will get done, the more we'll all become informed and the more it will become the norm. Like this is something that it could be phenomenal if it's so long as it's done ethically. I was in hospital in labour with her and she was on the Zoom calls with us. This is something that could benefit her and her children and her children's children. So it's really exciting and I jumped at the chance to be a part of it.